Hello, everybody, and welcome to Chakras and Cuss Words podcast. And today I have Shannon Andrus, and we are talking about morning routines and how we can get these morning routines to get us in the right direction of manifesting mindset, abundance, and just basically being freaking amazing. So Shannon, welcome. Please introduce yourself to the podcast and let us know a little bit about you. Sure. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me today. It is an honor to be on your show. Um, So hi, everyone. My name is Shannon Andrus. I am the host of the podcast, You Got This, The Journey, and I am a mindset coach. And all that came really from me going through a very difficult time during 2020, like everybody else did. I'm not trying to act like, you know, it was harder for me than anybody else, but um, I really struggled with my mental health. And I was realizing how little I was committing to taking care of myself and doing practices like self-love every day. And so I embarked on a mindset journey and I really started to work on myself and was able to reduce my anxiety and depression through all natural practices. And I should people. So hopefully anybody else out there who is struggling knows that they're not alone and hopefully this could help them so that they don't have to feel anxious and afraid every day. Totally. So I, I like that. Are, did you start your podcast in 2022 <laughs> or 20? I mean, 2020. Yeah. Yes. As well. Yes. Right. right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're not at 2022 yet. That's kind of weird, but yeah. So I think when I started my podcast too, it was like that 2020 era, the, the pandemic hit and so many of us who had like maybe thought about it. And then finally we're like, okay, let's start it. That kind of like lit us up and we're like, yeah, let's start the podcast. So how, how has this, um, journey of now becoming a podcaster, uh, mindset coach, how has this kind of um, started to play out with your everyday life and especially with your mornings? Oh man, that, I feel like that's like a loaded question because, you know, part of me is like back in 2020, like when I decided to start this, I think I started because after going through my own journey, I kind of had to reflect on how I was living my life before starting this podcast. And I was kind of disappointed. Like I had a good life and I, you know, everything was going great, but I was kind of going through the motions. Like what was my name and what would I be remembered for? You know what I mean? And I wanted to do something that served a higher purpose, you know, something that I was passionate about. And that's how this journey came out of it. But it has been very, very interesting. I have to say, I think that you know, deciding to go on this journey, I've realized a lot about the relationships that I had in my life with like friendships, um, career choices, just different things where I was like, you know what, maybe this isn't the right path anymore. Like maybe I need to start making a change. Um, so it's just been, I think so much reflection truly that's come out of this, but it's good. I mean, it's hard at times for sure when you have to realize those things, but the impact that it's had and the people I've seen who have been able to be helped by this, it makes it all worth it. Yeah. Did you, um, did, were you already in like a career? Did you have to do a career change in 2020 as well as the, the podcast? Well, so at the beginning of 2020, I just started a new job and literally the month before everything shut down, I had just started, I was out on the road cause I was in um, technology sales and all of a sudden we got quarantined and we had to stay home forever. And my career didn't change, but the way that I was acting in my career definitely changed. Cause I used to be somebody who I didn't shut down. Like I worked till all hours of the night. I had my work phone with me. Somebody emailed me at 8 PM asking for that file. I was on it. Like who cares? I'm home. on my couch. What does it matter? I go on vacation with my family or my boyfriend and I'd still be working even though I was taking PTO. And so I think what had changed is I still kept my career, but I stopped not having that boundary. You know, I really started to be strict for myself of this is when I'm going to shut off. This is when I'm taking care of me because work is not going to be <laughs> my entire life. <laughs> right. Right. And then I would say like, when you are a mindset coach, you obviously have to have that mindset of this has to get done, or this is how we get this done. And more of like the mindset, the strategy, and like the positive, I, I don't know what, what modalities do you use the most to kind of help people, especially with the mindset part? Well, there's a, there's a ton of pieces to that, but first and foremost, I think what was so important for me was to stop 
immediately jumping into work at the start of the day without taking care of me. And what I mean by that is I would jump into an email or I'd get ready for my work calls without doing anything for myself, except having a cup of coffee. And so what I've started to do is I've started introducing practices like meditation, visualizations and affirmations to set healthy intentions for the day, but also take time to really alleviate and to get rid of the anxiety and stress that may be sitting with me from the day before, help me prepare for any anxiety and stress that may come on throughout the day. And that's really helped me a lot. But the other thing is just learning how to, I think, really talk to myself throughout the day and look at situations. And that's, I'm not perfect. Trust me. There's times where I look in email or something somebody said to me and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so frustrated, (laughs) but it's taking that step back, reacting by, you know, tuning into the breath again, getting back into those positive conversations with myself and just, you know, not letting it ruin the day. Like I used to. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. When, um, when you say that, you know, you're a mindset coach and you help people with mindset and, um, obviously most of them are probably there to either like heal or create some kind of success or some kind of goal. How important is the morning and how important is it having a structure in the morning for, um, that type of journey that one is looking for? Yeah. I love this question because so many people, when they do like their consultation call with me, they think it's black and white that now everybody has to do this like strict regimen of like working out in the morning and doing your meditation affirmations and yada, yada, yada. But truthfully, like that just may not be it for everybody. And that's totally fine. So it's really just finding what exactly is going to work for you on your journey and how much time can you commit to yourself in the morning? Because if you're a busy mom and maybe you have to rush right into helping the kids get ready for school, you may not have that hour that somebody else could commit to doing every single practice. So it really just, you know, depends on first of all, what your lifestyle is, but second of all, it's, it's really just starting off with basic steps of just, can you find that five minutes in the morning? There's tons of five minute meditation practices and, you know, meditation could be different for everybody. It doesn't have to be sitting in silence. It doesn't have to be laying down. There's movement meditation. There's, you know, talking meditation where you incorporate affirmations. So I think, you know, it's important to start your morning every day with these practices, but everybody can do it in a totally different way. Yeah. I really like how you address that the morning is different for like multiple people. Um, especially like a mom who probably has to like get her kids up and she doesn't have time to, you know, do certain things. Maybe that's when the house is quiet. So that's when she utilizes that time to do that. And then also, um, I really think that people hear meditation and they automatically think, Oh my goodness. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like, <laughs> oh my goodness, they're going to know I'm not meditating. Right. Or, oh my goodness. Like, h- how do I do this? Like, how, how do I just stay still? But there's so many ways to really tap into that besides just the traditional meditation that we're taught to let the mind go silent and take up that energy of quiet, but there's actual, you know, like the affirmations or the guided or the, um, the speaking meditation is really positive as well. And especially with learning like how to shift the mind into a different area. So I, that's really amazing that you brought that up. Um, for the, for the mom, for the mom who's either at home or working and her morning, I know when I had kids, do you have any kids? No, not yet. So this is one of those things where it's like, (laughs) I, I do help people at that point in their life, right. but I also haven't experienced it yet. And I yeah. totally understand. I have no idea what it's like. <laughs> I mean, I, okay. Mornings I think can just be chaotic. And mm-hmm. I know with my morning as a mom, like it was a fucking shit show. Like I was like spilling coffee on the floor. I didn't have time to clean that shit up. Like it was like just running around trying to get these dang kids on school on time. So my son didn't get another ding on his record. Like it was like a constant, like, ah, and then you finally get them off and you're like, okay, here, take them, please. Thank you. Teachers, saints, please take these kids, take them. Thank you. And then you can finally get home and find like that piece where you're like, okay, I can breathe. 
now I could breathe and get in some of the self-development or, you know, work out or whatever it is that you want to do. So that's, <laughs> that's amazing that you structure it around the moms as well. What, what would you say is probably one of the main things that most um, women or men have, um, I guess you could say like a pre disposition of how their morning should go. Well, I think that for everybody, like it feels sometimes a little uncomfortable to put yourself first, you know, sometimes, you know, immediately or the night, night before, say before you went to bed, you knew the second you wake up, I have to do a, B and C, and you've already created your list of things that have to get done. So when you wake up, it doesn't really feel possible at the time to even find that five minutes to devote it to yourself, because you know, there's this thing lingering in the back of your mind that needs that attention. So I think for so many people, they just, they can't, they, they aren't doing this right now because they're putting everybody else first before themselves. But that's exactly why you need to be strict with doing this because you're not putting yourself first. That's when you get burnt out. That's when you maybe get resentful. It's when maybe an argument comes up that never even had to have happened because you're just so freaking overwhelmed, you know? So I, like I said, yeah, I think it just comes down to everybody's putting their family and everybody else first. Hey, that's a good place. You know, you're trying to do what's best for loved ones, but you're going to be best for them when, when you're being the best for yourself. Yeah. And, and definitely, I think sometimes now with the, um, I don't know what they're, the new, you know, the new morning routine almost has turned into like another to-do list. Like the new morning routine has turned into like another, um, you know, you have to have this morning. I don't, you know, like the Tony Robbins in the Rachel Hollis, not going to comment on her, but I'm just saying that notion that everything has to be like waking up at 4 a.m., hitting the gym, drinking my lemon water. And now I'm fucking fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> my morning is good. Like it's not necessarily going to happen like that. See, and, and I hate that. And I've gone into that before with my routine where it becomes a chore. And that's where I'm like, wait, this isn't serving me the way that it's meant to, because I'm just going through the motions. So, you know, as much as I promote morning routines, I also like always tell people every single day, my morning routine is different. And sometimes I don't always get everything done. Sometimes I have great mornings where I was able to get everything done, but it's not a failure either way. You know what I mean? It's just every day is different. So, you know, and a lot of people are promoting morning routines and they're like, you have to do a, B and C in this order. Well, you don't like what's going to work for you that day. Did you get up? And could you only do two minutes of quiet breathing and then get to everything else later on? Good yeah. for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and then <laughs> I think it's great too, that you're addressing like, okay, the morning can be kind of like chaotic and it could be like, uh, horrible because I know a lot of times I would get myself in this mindset. Like, um, like I said, I'll, I'll spill the coffee. Like I'm a klutz. Okay. <laughs> like if you know me, you'll be like, that girl's a klutz. Like there's a high possibility. There's a coffee stain on my shirt and possibly <laughs> on my scrubs. And there's like a protein shake bottle leaking from my car. Like that's just who I am. Like I'm just a klutz shit. Like that always happens to me most <laughs> of the time. So <laughs> I'm usually, cause I'm moving so fast and then I'm like headed out the door or whatever. So I used to put myself in like this thing where I'd be like, oh, my coffee spilled or I now got coffee on my shirt and now my day is like ruined. Like I'd be like, oh, this morning is already starting horrible. And now, now I'm all jacked up and I probably am going to end up getting fired. I mean, like I would just put myself in this horrible place because like one bad or one mistake or one mess happened in my morning. And I was like, ah, oh. So what, what tips would you give like somebody like me? <laughs> <laughs> it was a hot mess. <laughs> I, I love this because last Wednesday I had to go into the office for the very first time I work from home full time. And literally it's like my first day that I actually have to find like heels and like my full business outfit. And I spilt coffee on my white shirt. So <laughs> It happens to everybody. And I literally, I caught myself saying, so this is how today's going to be, you know, and we all do, we all fall into that pattern. 
But unfortunately, you know, the, what I compare this to is, is really the same experience that I have with anxiety is that the past is the past. It's done. The coffee spill, it's on your shirt. You cannot go back and do anything about that. It happened. And you can't predict the future. You don't know what's going to happen. So stop pretending that this one spill mm -hmm. is the trajectory of the entire day because it's not. So I think what's important when that comes up is to hone in on the present because our mind is racing either into the past or the future. And we're not connecting with what's currently happening and what we're in control of right now, which could actually bring us more joy and help us feel better about the day. So it could be simple as doing like the five, four, three, two, one method of finding, you know, the different ways to engage your senses around you or going back to affirmations or taking a moment to breathe or saying one thing you're grateful for. The, okay. The coffee spilled on me, but I'm so grateful that I was able to have a cup of coffee at home and I made enough to get a second cup. Things are going to be fine. Right. So I think it's really just not allowing our brain to spiral out of control into other times besides the present. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Do, do you have any like, um, routines that you are like, this is pretty golden. Like this is a staple. This is like a must that you work into your mornings or work in with your clients where you're like, this is like my number one priority, or this is like my number one thing. So it's, it's hard because well, so I'm going to give you two, my number one thing that I think is like an easy one that works for everybody and that anybody could do no excuses is if you simply, simply start changing every time that you say I have to, to, I get to, and oh. it's going to feel so cheesy at first. It's going to be like, Psh you're full of crap. Like, oh, I have to go work out. Well, no, I get to go work out. Like I'm healthy. I, you know, have the ability to go get an exercise done. I mean, that is a blessing right there. And it does feel cheesy at first, but then you're going to realize how many little things are we taking for granted in life? You know, mm -hmm. the other thing that I know I said morning routine shouldn't be strict, but I find this to be very, very effective and powerful is if after meditation, you go straight into journaling and try not to take a break. And the reason I bring that up is because during meditation, so much from our subconscious is coming forward into the front of our brain so that when we go to jot everything out on paper, we can really get in touch with what's triggering anxiety. What's the intention for the day? What is it that I want to be? And who do I no longer want to be? And these are all things that I think your journaling will become more powerful and it'll help you to alleviate stress and also feel better about your intention for the day. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. I, I, I enjoy journaling probably, you know, first thing when I wake up, I try not to check the cell phone. Like I feel like the cell phone thing is like, I'm so oh. bad with that. <laughs> Like the, the, you know, don't check it. Don't look at that email. Like, don't look at, you know, that social media app. Don't check it. That one, there's been a few times where I've been like, I'm, I'm not checking my cell phone. And I'll like, I'll be consistent and I won't check it. And I could do that. You know, I can't do it every day. Okay. If somebody says they do it every day, they're lying. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're lying to you. They're lying to you. I can do it sometimes and I'll be like getting stuff done. I'll be like journaling. Usually I'm very good at going straight to the gym when I do not check my cell phone. I'm like straight to the gym. So I think that one is really good is when you wake up too. if you decide to do journaling instead of meditation, if you wake up and do like journaling right after you wake up, it really kind of opens you up to like what's coming forward with your subconscious as well. So I really like that you brought up journaling in the morning. I think journaling in the morning is like amazing. I also like it at night too, but journaling in the morning, I think is probably the best time to journal. Do you, now this is kind of like a tricky question. Okay. So don't like, if you're like, eh, don't worry, girl, we got your back. Okay. So when you have morning routines, would, do you have any clients who are working night shift or people who are quote unquote, like the nocturnal animals who are more up at night and maybe kind of sleep through the morning? What suggestions would you give somebody who is not necessarily a morning person? <laughs> 
<laughs> so I actually, I created a guide on this because <laughs> I think everybody could become a morning person. So it's my 10 step guide. It's a checklist. And it actually goes through why morning routines are more successful. The three main reasons that I feel like they are the best and I prefer them over night routines and then the 10 steps to become a morning person. But I have not worked with anybody who is on a night shift. Everybody that I know is working in nine to five. However, there are people I know that they, they just think they can't get up early and find that time. But I challenge that like, because I, I don't even think you have to get up earlier. Sometimes I really don't, because I think, let's say you wake up at 8am and you start your day at 830. I guarantee from eight to eight 30, there is five minutes that you're scrolling Instagram that you can, you know, push that back to later in the day. And you can make that five minutes, your, you know, meditation or your journaling, mm-hmm. like you're choosing other things to do besides these mindful practices. So you don't necessarily need to become, you know, an earlier riser. You just have to be, you know, more intentional with your morning routine. The other part of it though, is let's say, eight to eight 30. I'm so strict. I get up, I have my coffee. I shower, I get in the car, blah, 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 blah. you know, there's no time for me to do that. Well, you can set your alarm just five or 10 minutes earlier. I mean, what's seven 50 to eight o'clock. What's the difference there, but it's going to make the whole difference in your day. So I would say either really evaluate how, how you're already treating your morning or just find that extra couple of minutes that you could just set your alarm. <laughs> Uh, okay. So you said uh, that you work with a lot of eight to fivers and uh, nine to fivers. And I think that's so cool because, um, so for me, the eight to five, nine to five is like, it was like the golden shift. Like I, it, the fact that you are there pretty regularly, but it's, you're able to balance more stuff out because I'm going, I'm coming from working 12 hour shifts. I've done I've done night shift where personally, um, I did night shift for a few years and I know the people who love night shift, who love that, that time to work is that's their preference. But like, if you feel like it might not be working for you, get off the shift because I have legit done a total, like total regrowth or re, I guess you could say almost like retransition. Once I left night shift, my health, my everything just improved so much, like my mental clarity, my health and wellness, like with working out and trying to eat better. When I was working night shift, it was just a constant, like not having that ability to adapt. So, um, I personally think like for people who work night shift, if you can, before you go to bed to use that opportunity to try to like meditate. So you get like good sleep, but some people who are on night shift, love it. If you don't love it, try to find ways to get out because <laughs> you're missing a whole bunch of mornings that, <laughs> that are amazing. <laughs> Do most people get um, nervous when they start to structure their morning routine? Um, I don't think, I don't think with the morning routine, because it's, you know, what the best part is, is like the morning routine is totally private. Like you're not doing it Mm -hmm. in a group setting. I mean, even if you are doing guided meditation, it's recorded. So nobody has to know that you're doing your morning routine. Nobody's recording you and analyzing and giving you (laughs) feedback, you know? Right. So that's the, the best part about this is it really is like your own practice that you can, you're the only one judging yourself. Um, I think where people get nervous is the after part, the, after they've taken time to focus on themselves and maybe do these morning routines, realizing what it is that they want in life and deciding to take that shift. We are so stuck in our comfort zones to be like, no, I'm going to stay here. I'm going to hold on tight and I don't want to move forward. I think that is where the fear comes in. Mm-hmm. When, what are like the most that you see people are like, I really want to fix my morning routine on this level? Like what is the level that most people want to fix it on or find new things to incorporate? Like, is it usually they want a smoother morning, less less chaotic morning, or like, is it more energy, more strategy? I think for, for most people that I speak to about this, it's that 
they feel so much anxiety or stress throughout the day. And so they just want to start doing something that could maybe help them out, but they're not doing anything at all. So I think that that is what I hear most is that people really want to find a way to reduce anxiety and stress, especially, especially during this past year where people are, are scared more than ever. We're just living in very unprecedented times right now. And, you know, there's a lot of people struggling with mental health and maybe they don't have the resources or they haven't been able to find it yet. And they want to start doing something at home. And the first step is maybe this morning routine to see if this will help them with some of the anxiety and stress they're feeling. I know that's what it was for me. Right. 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 Yeah. When, well, I mean, my morning routine, because I usually work 12 hour shifts, but I'm now going to be an eight to fiver. So it's going to change. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm excited. And then I'm also nervous because I do a lot of stuff on the days off that I have like, um, related to the podcast and, you know, content creation where I'm like, how am I going to get this to fit in? You know, but I know I'll, it will probably work. Like <laughs> I might just be a little more cuckoo than normal, <laughs> but whatever. So when you find people who are like, how do I start to structure a good morning routine? What's something like, what's, what tip could you give them? Like when they're like, okay, how do I structure a good morning routine? How do I, do I do a layout? Do I do a blueprint? Like what am I doing with this? Um, you know, I would say to start off like slow and small. I don't think you have to do everything like so intense all at once. You don't have to do, you know, 20 minutes of meditation into 20 minutes of visualization into two hours of exercise. Like that just is ridiculous, you know? Um, so it could be just as simple as like not even going into full journaling, but just start your day by writing down your five things that you're grateful for. And that's it. Just five things you're grateful for. And maybe instead of doing the full meditation, just do two minutes of deep breathing exercises and then start to introduce the guided. Like I think starting slow is, is probably going to be the best step because all at once could be a bit overwhelming. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, unless you're somebody who wants to go all in, that's fine. But I think you can start slow and figure out like what routine is going to work best for you. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't want to like overdo it where you're like tired. <laughs> you're like, damn, that morning was busy. Damn. But I did do a lot, but now yeah. I'm exhausted and I can't do the rest of the day. So <laughs> that, I mean, that is true. Go, go slow with your morning routines. When, um, you do your mindset coaching and when you, uh, help people like with manifestation, how, how do you incorporate the morning routine with them? Do you like, how do you do it with the mindset and the manifestation, like incorporating, this is one of the reasons why you're possibly having blocks or possibly having issues with this, um, with your mindset. Well, you know, I think that the journaling piece really comes into play a lot. And I actually recommend that people use the journaling all throughout the day. So in the morning, it's super important to get clear on intention, you know, goal setting and introduce some positivity, right? Some of that positive self-talk and the affirmations, but throughout the day, I think journaling is really important because then you can start to catch yourself. I always say like, whenever you start to find yourself being very negative or like something is triggering, like on a anger in you throughout the day, where it's like, it's something's pissing you off write it down because I think so often we just go through the motions. We're not even thinking of like, what is actually like triggering this motion for me, you know, but mm -hmm. setting it in the morning is a great way to just introduce positivity and intention. But I think throughout the day to continue with it is going to help you to really figure out, well, where, where is it that's causing the unhappiness or where is it that's causing the stress for me? Mm -hmm. And you, you said you notice most of it, like when it is kind of something that's coming up or an emotion and it's like the anxiety or the, or the, the frustration or the scaredness, do you see most people having it in the morning more than like later on through the day, like the anxiety part or not really. I mean, for most people, like a lot of people that I've spoken with, it, it all is around their career. That just seems to be the trend. I mean, some people, it is relationships and some people right. it's just, you damn know, career, right? <laughs> yeah, that yeah. damn job, Shit, but the, right? there's something they don't feel good about what they're doing, you know? Yeah. And so I think 
it's some point there is some point in the day is it that you're being um called out in in your sales meeting or to present about your numbers like a lot of people if they're in commission based jobs i mean that anxiety is huge of having to meet their goals and present on that but for other people is it simply just did I upset my coworker? The communication's not there. I mean, it literally could be anything, but I think a lot of people it's throughout the day, but that's why the morning routine I think is helpful because you're setting yourself up, like preparing your brain to be able to deal with those things. So <laughs> when that anxious moment or stressful moment comes on, you're not like, Oh my God, what do I do? And go into panic mode. You're, you're, you're kind of, you, you've given your, your brain that, that warm up before the exercise. Right. And I feel, um, as a nurse, uh, working in the, the hospital setting that for a long time, especially w- with the pandemic, um, is when I started to get the anxiety, uh, in the morning was when I was going to work, like the first week back of, um, going to work after I was, um, put on leave w- with COVID, um, I, I didn't have COVID, but like to prevent myself from, ah, well, anyway, well, the first week that I went back, I started to get anxiety and it was just kind of like, cause I was like, oh my God, oh, I'm going to be working. Ah, you know, and it was like really like kind of a little bit stressful for me. So I was like taking that time to like sit in my car, do some like affirmations, remind myself, like, you got this. This is, this is your calling, even though at the time I was like, I don't want this to be my calling anymore. I I changed my mind, you know, but at the time I was like, okay, I got this, you know, I feel clear now. I would do a lot of praying to the ER gods is what I would call them. The ER gods, like, yes. And I think sometimes like, especially with work, okay, we know we have we have to work, we have to pay the bills, like, or, you know, or we have to find another way to get our bills paid. Like, unless we decide to be like urban campers or something, but but like right now we got to pay the bills. Mama got to pay the bills. So we have to find ways where the anxiety isn't like over burning us where we can't function in our normal activities. And I noticed for me in, as, um, in that environment, it did really start to like, kind of manifest in the morning, kind of like, Oh, okay. Now, now what now, now what do I do with this? Yeah. Well, I find with a lot of people too, what's very common is that Sunday nights, like Sunday nights, it's like dreading the work week, feeling like I have to get through five days of this. I have to get through five days of this crap. I cannot believe I'm going to like have to go into this work week again. That's where the anxiety triggers. And then Friday they feel great. They have two days off where they don't have to look at this job again. And then Sunday night, it's like, Oh my God, we have to get back into this. (laughs) Right. Oh my God. I have to see this person again. I didn't even like them last week. I don't like them again this week. Yeah. And I think that's why the coworker memes (laughs) do so well on Instagram because everybody hates that fact of, Oh, it's Monday and I got to go back to work and I got to do all this, you know, working stuff, you know? So yeah, it's going to be interesting. Me being a nine to five, where I keep saying, I have to calm that personality down, calm it down. Not everybody's <laughs> going to get you a sense of humor, girl, calm it down, calm it down. So it's going to be interesting. Um, what, what would you say do the do morning routines almost have to like change a little bit or get like spiced up because I would think after like after so long like the morning routine was like kind of get boring after a while you're like oh, I'm gonna do this again mm. every morning <laughs> yeah and that's why, like mine changes all the time like there's some mornings where like I can sit and do a full meditation and then there's other mornings where I'm like I am jittery as heck right now and I'm thinking about the grocery list like I've got to incorporate movement because I cannot focus right now mm-hmm. um but but it does it could get after a while especially with the journaling piece I feel you can get to a point of feeling like you're like dear diary and today <laughs> This is Monday (laughs) and I hate you. (laughs) So something that I started doing for that, because it did kind of feel like after a while, I was just like, I don't know, talking. Um, I started to find journal prompts that would trigger something like what's something that I didn't know yesterday when I was journaling, but I know now today when I'm journaling or, you know, what was something that happened yesterday that was good. And what can I look forward to today? And it's, it could just 
prompt a new conversation. So I think journal prompts, and there's so many out there, like if you just Google journal prompts, there's millions and that can actually, you know, give you a more meaningful journal entry. So you're not feeling like dear diary. <laughs> right. I hate my job and I hate my coworkers. <laughs> period. <laughs> exactly. And my husband never buys me flowers. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Oh man. Yeah. The morning routines. And are you, do you get a lot of couple morning routines where, um, <laughs> I, I did a podcast this with this lady and sometimes I'm like, so tell me a little, what would a day in a life look like with you in her morning? I was like, damn, I'm jealous. Like, she's like, my husband makes me a smoothie and I put some greens in there and then he <laughs> drinks his smoothie and then I drink my smoothie. And then we're like freaking fabulous. And I'm like, God damn it. I knew I was failing somewhere. My husband does not make me a smoothie. So are there any couples who like share their morning routines or have the same morning routine kind of like strategy or they incorporate it with each other? Have you seen any of that come up? I have never, I've never. (laughs) And, and, (laughs) And honestly, like so many people it's like, and I mean, this is even for me, it's like, as long as like my boyfriend respects what I have to do in the morning before we go for our walk with our dog. I'm cool with it. But like, he's not into like all that, like, cause it's like kind of woo woo. I I guess it's like the term everybody knows, right. The meditation app for me, it's not for everybody. Everybody thinks it's woo woo. Right. Um, so, but no, nobody that I've spoken with has been able to do it with their partner. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Well, that girl, she got it down because she was like, yes, he makes smoothies, meditation, da, 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 da. He checks Wall Street. I'm like, what the girl? Right? No. I was like, meanwhile, yeah, no. Okay. So, <laughs> so that might be a first work on your morning routine and then incorporate the spouse. If yes. you can, if you can, if you can. If you can't, then you can't. I mean, come on now. So Tell us a little bit about you and what do you have going on and how people can find you and stuff like that. Yeah. So I release my podcast every Monday and it's uh, different tips and tricks about the journey that I'm on, because as much as I like to come on here and talk about morning routines and what's helped me, I'm still learning and going through it. So on my podcast, I share what's worked, what's not worked. And I interview people who can help teach me more. Um, and my Instagram page is you got this underscore the journey. And on there, I share the podcast updates, quotes from the episodes, motivational tips and tricks and inspiration. Um, and through there, if people just go to the link in my bio, they can go to my website where they can book a free 20 minute consultation call, no strings attached. It's literally just to see is mindset coaching for you. What are your current struggles? Where are you looking to accomplish? And if nothing else, sign up for my newsletter because I share recipes, podcasts, quotes, and all fun stuff. So oh, any girl, resource anybody look needs. Bad. I don't hear nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You guys got to follow her because you ain't getting no recipes for me, honey. <laughs> I'm <laughs> terrible. People ask me like, okay, so like, where can people find you? And I'm like, okay, I have this, 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 and this. I'm like, I got to tighten up this soap box here. So. <laughs> right, 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 right. Well, it was such a pleasure having you and thank you so much for coming on. And as always, all your info will be in the show notes so people can reach out and find you and subscribe to your podcast because she got recipes and she do. <laughs> I'm like, you guys already know you ain't getting none of that from me <laughs> because mama is stressed out. <laughs> so um, just follow uh, chakras and cuss words. Give us a like, a comment, and help me move on up that uh, podcast ladder. And thank you, everybody, and goodbye.